everyone for joining us. Give it one second while we let some people get in. Welcome to the welcome to the chat. Welcome to the workshop, everybody. We have 30 minutes of information. Daniel was looking forward this to this talk. Well, awesome. Well, really, really glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Luke, uh, whenever you're ready, I will uh, I will jump into the prez. Well, as I said before, thank you for everyone for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Patrick, who is, I'm sure, going to be an incredible workshop as usual. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself. You'll probably do a better job than I can, but uh, Patrick's a good friend of ours. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm going to give it one second. I think we should be good to go, and the stream is live. Um, you want to take it away? It's all yours. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Uh, really excited to be here. Um, thank you, Luke, for that for that introduction. Yeah, I'll go a little bit deeper <laughs> as well. Um, really excited to be chatting at ETH Global. Um, anybody who follows me on Twitter or or has listened to me speak before, um, ETH Global always does a phenomenal job with these hackathons, and uh, you've, you've picked a great hackathon to attend. So uh, really excited to see what everybody builds here, uh, see the amazing projects people do and uh, and the like. So for those of you who don't me, know me, um, let me... Let me actually share my screen, um, and we'll uh, we'll jump into it. So, for those of you who don't me don't know me, uh, my name is Patrick Collins. I'm a developer advocate on the Chainlink project. Um, we're going to be talking about these hybrid smart contracts in these decentralized Oracle networks. Um, that's me. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Medium. Uh, find me all over the place in the Discord, Stack Overflow, you know, etc. Um, and uh, for those of you who are in the chat here. Uh, let me open up the chat. Uh, let me see everyone. Uh, feel I, I love making this collaborative. So if you have questions or if I say something that you you know you want to touch on or you want to maybe to extrapolate on, you know, please leave a comment. And my camera has overheated, um, so that's I'm just going to go away for a little bit. So uh, it's fine. We're sharing screen anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, so feel free to j jump into the chat and say anything there. Uh, I love making these collaborative and, and really, uh, really chatting. So, so let's talk. Let's talk about smart contracts. Let's talk about blockchain. We'll talk about oracles, and we'll talk about you know building these insane projects that we're looking to build here at ETH Global. So, in order to really understand Chainlink, right, and really understand why we're doing all these smart contracts, why we're doing everything that we're doing, we first want to say, okay, well, what what is a blockchain? What are, what are you even building on? Right? These are these highly secure, reliable. Uh, decentralized networks that aren't controlled by a centralized authority, right? And it's important to, to keep this in mind because when we're building these smart contracts, we want to keep in mind, okay, like what is the purpose that we're even building them? You know, why, what are these smart contracts? Why are we building them on this blockchain, right? Why don't I just do this in Python? What is this? What is the advantage that I get here, right? Uh, so when we're talking about contracts and we talk about smart contracts, we really really want to just kind of think about, okay, what's what's the definition? There are these binding agreements, right? Or it's this this legal document. And these contracts and these agreements that we've uh, that we've been creating have changed over the years, right? We've gone from you know uh, telefax uh, uh, fax machines to digital agreements and we finally arrived at this world uh, of smart contracts, these digital agreements. Um, now it's it, we want to keep in mind though, okay, well what is the advantage here? What do these smart contracts actually do for us? What is this? What what is this thing? Now, one of the best examples of what these smart contracts are doing for us, what these decentralized agreements do for us, is um, we can actually look at a recent event that happened with Robinhood, right? So, what happened with Robinhood recently? Robinhood painted this picture saying, "Hey, come use our application. We are democratizing finance. Look what you can do on our platform." They painted this picture of this world that was better, uh, and you can do all these wonderful things. But when push came to shove, um, they ended up being this centralized intermediary that had a little switch that they could flip. And once you started doing something they didn't like, they flipped the switch and stopped allowing people from buying specific stocks. Right, so there was this there was this centralized intermediary who was incentivized for whatever reason to not have you buy these stocks. So they flipped a switch and they turned it off. Right, essentially removing access to these global financial markets, removing your ability um, as uh, oh wait was was nobody able to see before? No, 
Uh, okay, everyone was able to before. Okay, cool. Um, removing your ability to uh, freely enact with our free markets, right? So this totally removed this quote unquote free markets. It was it was free. It was a free market only by um, a theater, right? It was a it was a free theater basically, right? You didn't actually have the ability to interact with these markets as you wished. So obviously a huge point of issue, a huge failure point for us as an entire ecosystem, because there's a single actor who has control over these markets, right? And we are not truly free to engage with finance the way that we wanted to. Um, this leads us to this, the advantages of these smart contracts, right? Instead of having this centralized group that we make an agreement with that can flip a switch off, we can interact with a smart contract that we don't have to trust is going to um, act poorly, right? Because everything, instead of being written in, in, a, in an agreement in something we have to trust, it's written in code, right? We don't, all we have to do is trust that one plus one equals two because this smart contract is this self-executing contract, right? Uh, now these smart contracts are amazing. Um, they run on the blockchain, they run in this decentralized networks. And that's what, that's why this blockchain is such a big deal, right? Uh, it's because smart contracts, they run on the blockchain. Uh, and there's these superior digital agreements. They're superior to these kind of old brand-based agreements. They have more security, guaranteed execution. They're more transparent. They have this trust mineralization. Uh, they're also more efficient. But this all culminates to this main issue, right? Especially with, with what we saw with Robinhood, where we move away from these paper guarantees, right? We move away from, hey, trust my logo to these cryptographic guarantees, so instead of saying, ah, I'm going to trust Robinhood's going to do the right thing, we can now just trust that one plus one equals two, and that the math and the code that we write is going to execute um, as intended. We remove this counterparty risk, which is the likelihood or probability that one of these involved parties um, uh, in the transaction might default on their contractual obligation. So this is a huge advantage, right? Now, where does this take us? This is great. So we can do all these cool smart contracts. We can build you know, token transfers and stuff. However, as we know, blockchains, in order to have this high security, they are deterministic. They're deterministic systems by design. This means that they actually can't interact with the real world. They can't digest real data. They can't do any external computation. And this is what's known as the Oracle problem. These smart contracts are unable to connect with external systems like data feeds, APIs, existing payment structures, or really anything else. And, and like I said, this is because they're deterministic. If you try to introduce variable data into these blockchains, consensus can't be reached, right? And this is a huge issue because if we want these smart contracts, if we want these agreements to replace our old brand-based agreements, then we're going to need a way to actually interact with the real world. We're going to need a way for these to make sense. So the solution to this is using what's called an oracle or a blockchain oracle. And a blockchain oracle is going to be any device that interacts with the off-chain world to provide external data or computation to smart contracts. Now, the problem isn't totally fixed there, though, right? Because if we use a single oracle, this is going to be a single centralized point of failure. Or if we use a single data source or single computation, you've done all this work to code your smart contract on a blockchain. You've done all this work to make this decentralized logic layer. If your data layer is centralized, then you're no better than, you know, you're no better than running on Robinhood, right? It's no better than being part of this centralized organization, right? Because you need both your logic layer and your data layer to be decentralized in order to be a truly decentralized smart contract. So this is where Chainlink comes into play and provides a ton of value to enable these smart contracts to have a real effect on the real world and on what we do in, in real life and actually replace these old brand-based agreements with these more cryptographically secure um, uh, smart contracts. So Chainlink is a decentralized Oracle network for providing data and decentralized external computation to our smart contracts. Here's a, a little example of, of what this looks like for providing uh, pricing data to a smart contract. So you have a network of Chainlink oracles off-chain, all reading in the price of, of, uh, of an asset from different data sources. Each one of these Chainlink nodes is a decentralized independent entity. They reach a consensus off-chain, and then in a single transaction with each node cryptographically signing uh, their answer, they send it on chain. And now we have access to the real world and real data. So 
Uh, quick question in the chat. Any resources to make our own custom Oracle with APIs? Oh, oh yes, there is. And we will get to that in just a second. So um, these are known as hybrid smart contracts. So these combine this on-chain and off-chain systems to create these hybrid smart contracts, which have unlimited customization since we now combine the prowess of, of our on-chain blockchains with really anything off-chain, right? Uh, keepers, random numbers, data, you know, et cetera. Um, a simple data flow for something like weather uh, weather data would look like this, which would enable people to, you know, build crop insurance um, applications. And Arbol is actually one that's doing exactly this. So you get your data sources like rainfall, temperature, you know, et cetera. They go through a decentralized network of chain link nodes, which goes to these um, to these weather contracts um, uh, on chain that will do the insurance for, you know, whatever clients have subscribed, uh, to the smart contract. All that being said, um, we can now hop into some of these kind of decentralized out of the box applications that we can just hit the ground running. Somebody has already done all the work for us to set up these networks. And all we need to do is just click a button or, uh, change a config, and we can now use these networks in our smart contracts to uh, to get data or do computation. And the first one we're going to talk about is Chainlink data feeds. Um, and these are huge, absolutely massive in the world of decentralized finance. So um, for example, uh, as, as we know, DeFi is this insane, um, insane industry that's come about due to our, our, uh, our blockchain and smart contract use, which allows for us to engage in finance without centralized intermediaries. Um, and in order to really do a lot of what we do in this DeFi world, we're going to need the price of assets in our smart contracts. It's really hard to build some type of financial instrument that has no idea what the price of the, of the underlying assets that it's working with are, right? Uh, and we see this time and time again. You'll, we'll see in a second that you know, the biggest DeFi protocols right now are all using some type of pricing data. Right, and the way that it works is uh, similar to this image here. We get data from these exchanges um, and from all these different sources that go through this uh, this layer of decentralized chain link oracles, um, and they get posted on chain. Uh, and then all these different users can then use that data now that they know what the price of this asset is in the real world. And if we head over to data.chain.link, we can see in here we have just a list of some of the different um, networks that are on here. We can look at like FUSD, for example, which is getting the price of Ethereum in terms of USD. We can see all these independent node operators that are providing data and providing pricing information for this, um, for this answer here. We can see kind of different trigger and update parameters. Uh, we can see you know, the history here and uh, all the different oracles that are responding. But this allows us essentially to get the price of Ethereum in USD uh, into our smart contracts, right? And so that's a visual that that's a little visualization that allows us to see kind of all these different uh, all these different data feeds and you know what they're doing and what's going on. So doing it in this way kind of creates this community good of this asset of of these assets here that allow people to you know access this data, access this information. Um, and not only is it more secure, more decentralized, but it's also cheaper since we're using uh, this network as a community. Uh, and that's incredibly powerful. And here are some of the protocols using it right now. <laughs> These numbers are already outdated, um, but we have giants like Aave, which is securing $11 billion. I think that's actually closer to uh, 24. Actually, you know, let's even just DeFi Pulse real quick. Let's see, Aave, okay, $14 billion. Um, 14 million step protocol, sushi swap for you know margin trading synthetics for pricing the underlying collateral. So these data feeds are being battle tested and securing some of the biggest protocols in the space. Um, and it's the tool that you know all these giants are using to create these decentralized protocols, right? And uh, I love talking about DeFi because it is so early still. There is so many protocols yet to be built. If we look at the overall cryptocurrency market of like you know maybe 2 trillion or something like that right now versus the DeFi market of like 50, 60, 70 billion. It kind of keeps fluctuating. Um, it's DeFi is like 4% of all value in cryptocurrency. So people always ask, Hey, like what's something really cool I can build. DeFi is, is here and it's just a fraction of where it could be and, and where it's going to be. So um, these price feeds out of the box, incredibly powerful, uh, really 
uh, incredibly battle tested, um, just an amazing way to get data into your smart contracts. So that's kind of the first out of the box, you know, ready to go decentralized uh, feature uh, that these chain link networks uh, uh, have. So another question here, what is the aggregation function? Average, median, it is the median. Uh, great question here, sorry about those calendar notifications. Let's see if my, my camera wants to turn back on. Hello, hello, camera. All right, it's back on now. Okay, cool. Hopefully it doesn't overheat again. Apologies on that. Uh, next, let's talk about randomness. On-chain verifiable randomness using Chainlink VRF. And uh, I only have 10 minutes left, so I'm gonna try to get through everything here. Malicious RNG operators are a risk. So uh, as we know, like I said, blockchains are deterministic. What does determinism mean? Determinism by definition means that randomness cannot exist. So if you know a lot about computer science, you know that when you do like math.random on your computer, you're really getting a pseudo random number. You're not getting a real random number. It's looking at someplace in memory and going, this looks random enough. I'm gonna use that as my, my random number. If you do that on the blockchain, it is then easy to game, very easy to game. So we see a lot of people uh, with, a, with a naive implementation of getting a random number. They'll use like block.difficulty or block.timestamp or something, but all these values are predictable and influenceable. So if we use these, we're basically giving control of our smart contract to whatever miner mines our transactions. Uh, and for those of you who have heard about miner extractable value, this isn't some hypothetical mysterious thing. This is something that really happens and is happening right now. Um, so we want a way to get provably random numbers into our smart contracts. And to do that, since the blockchain is deterministic, we need to look outside the blockchain. So Chainlink VRF or Chainlink Verifiable Randomness Function has a way to do this and give us this truly random number. Um, and in fact, it uses crypto, uh, cryptography to prove that the number is actually verifiably random. Excuse me, verifiably random. So we can keep this cryptographic based smart contract and that's gonna be a key. Uh, it's something all you always wanna think about when you're building these smart contracts. Is this cryptographically um, secure? And this is a solution to get one of these provably random numbers in here. And we've seen a ton of different protocols using this, in particular with this NFT craze. Uh, we've seen uh, Chainlink VRF explode in use, especially for those looking to get random stats for their NFTs, because using a, a true random number, you get provably rare and truly unique uh, NFTs, because you don't have to rely on the contract creator kind of deciding what the market cap is you can kind of have these these truly random applications here we've seen things like pokemon axie infinity board apes recently was one that started using chainlink vrf um but there's just a ton of ton of ways especially in gaming uh you can use chainlink vrf for uh is anyone planning to do stuff with the uh have a uh, i'm not sure i totally understand the question daniel it sounds like you're asking if if people are, are looking to sync on chainlink chats yes there is a Chainlink Discord um, in ETH Global, ETH Online. Uh, definitely jump in there if you're looking to chat about Chainlink. Uh, a lot of the other Chainlink developer advocates are going to be in there. Oh, looking for team members. Daniel's looking for team members. Go say hi to Daniel. Um, jump into the Chainlink uh, Discord or the ETH Global Discord. Jump to that Chainlink channel uh, and meet some amazing developers there. So, um, so that's Chainlink Vera. The next out of the box, decentralized, ready to go, is this newer feature called Chainlink Keepers Network. And... This is something that I'm incredibly excited about because it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. As we know, um, doing triggering things to happen on chain or making any type of state chain in a blockchain needs a transaction to happen. Somebody's got to spend some gas at some point, right? So you don't want to be the one behind the counter, you know, uh, making these transactions every time. Ideally, you would have a decentralized network that's going to do some type of event-based trigger. Right, and that's exactly what what keepers is. So there's this network of chainlink nodes that are checking this keepers registry, looking for um, uh, triggers, looking for event triggers for them to perform some action. So it it reaches out to the registry, checks it, says, "Hey, is anybody eligible for uh, for an upkeep?" Once a contract says, "Hey, I'm eligible for an upkeep," it responds, uh, and the chainlink nodes will be the one to actually perform that upkeep, spend the gas to, um, to do this event-based decentralized computation, uh, which is incredibly powerful. And I'm really looking forward to people building more with this because this is really new and it, the, uh, the use cases it enables are uh, staggering and outstanding. And uh, we're already seeing a ton of people 
look to use these more and more um, and really excited what people here are going to build. And at the end of the day, these are kind of these, these amazing kind of out of the box, ready to go decentralized applications. But uh, if you want these chain link oracles and these, this chain link technology really allows you to do anything that you want to do, take any input, get any output, do any type of external computation, do really anything that you want to do. Now that sometimes takes a little bit more effort, you know, building your own chain link Oracle, building your own functionality. But um, we have seen a number of projects take this, uh, this ability and really do whatever you want to do. So uh, in the documentation as well, there's a, th this kind of unlimited customization feature falls under this uh, using any API. So you can make get requests, HTTP post requests, whatever you want to do. And obviously you can just host your own APIs to, to interact with these, uh, these applications, right? So like, for example, if you want to get the data from some HTTP get call into your smart contract, boom, you know, this is how you would get some of this data uh, into your smart contract here. So unlimited customization here with Chainlink and using these off-chain oracles. So uh, definitely head over to docs.chain.link. Uh, whoops, docs.chain.link. Um, it has pretty much everything that you, uh, everything to teach you here. If you've never done anything with smart contracts as well, there's a basics tutorial, random number tutorial, there's videos, API calls. Uh, if you're looking to learn about uh, Chainlink and how to use all the services, this is where you can live. This is where you're going to want to live. For example, price feeds, you can jump to the price feeds, um, the price feeds documentation. There's even usually a little button like deploy this with Remix that you can click. It'll bring you right to a Remix uh, application. And I'm, I'm even going to do a little demo here. Uh, and we'll go into samples, docs, I'll change the link, samples, price feed, price consumer. Um, it gives us all this information, gives us all the code here. I'm, I'm speeding a little bit because uh, we're going to be a little short on time. Um, but let's go ahead and even deploy this contract right from the docs. I'm on the Coven testnet here. So I do need some Coven link or excuse me, some Coven ETH. If you ever need to find a faucet, just Google link token contracts, scroll down to whatever testnet you want and boom, typically, you know, the faucets will be here. Uh, if you want testnet link or testnet ETH, it uh, looks like I am deploying this contract still. But once I deploy, this is an example of one of these price feeds contracts and we'll be able to pull, see exactly what um, pulling the price from one of these contracts looks like. So we can see the contract here, we just hit this get latest price and boom, this is the latest price of ETH in terms of USD. Uh, the question is, oh, well, why is it, why is it such a big number that looks so weird? Um, solidity doesn't work with decimals. So we have to actually multiply this by a number uh, and this is multiplied by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight decimal places. So we know that this is $3,220 for the price right here. So that's kind of uh, an example of using these, um, using the docs here. There's also VRF, like I said, keepers. Um, some of them are a little bit, take a couple more steps. So you can always go through the tutorials at the top um, to learn everything as well. If you're looking for ideas, 77 Smart Contract Use Cases Enabled by Chainlink is a fantastic article that will give you uh, tons of insight on some of the different things you can build. It's a constantly growing, uh, doc, and you should absolutely take a look. For those of you who are new to either Chainlink, smart contract development, you're obviously asking the question, where should I learn? We just went over the docs, blog.chain.link developers tab has a, just tons of tutorials, IPFS, NFTs, um, build your own um, a DeFi application, whatever you want, uh, gaming, raffles, etc. Chainlink YouTube, there's a ton of Chainlink uh, tutorials on the Chainlink YouTube. There's engineering tutorials, developer workshops, both fantastic. If you're working with Brownie, Truffle, or Hard Hat, head over to the Smart Contract GitHub repository, and there's demo um, repositories for all the Chainlink features in for Brownie, for Hard Hat, for Truffle. And uh, if you're doing Smart Contract development and you're not familiar with Brownie, Hard Hat, or Truffle, I highly recommend checking those out because those are uh, game changers that make your life a lot easier. If you're looking to learn more, you're looking to get help, jump into the Discord. There's a ton of vibrant community people there. I've met so many people through the Discord who I'm still friends with today. Um, the GitHub is a great place to go. The documentation is a great place to go. If you have a question, get familiar with Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange Ethereum. 
These are perfect places to ask questions uh, and join the community and get answers back. And uh, obviously, uh, if you want to jump on Twitter, um, say hi to me, say hi to anybody on the team. We're very active on Twitter as well. And I do want to plug this, um, this other video as well for look at free code, Camp Solidity. This just came out four days ago. Uh, I'm incredibly proud of it. It is a, if you're like, I have no idea how to blockchain, that is a not very flattering face here. This is an end-to-end 16-hour -end course. I know it's long. I give some tips on how to, how to break it up uh, on literally everything, everything that you need to know. Uh, it's got a little, uh, little course contents in here, um, starting from scratch, um, doing incredibly, incredibly advanced things in here. So um, just anything on smart contract development, this is an absolutely fantastic resource. And uh, we're, we're coming out with a, a page as well um, on our, in our docs very soon on your recommended boot camps because there's some fantastic boot camps out there, some fantastic sources to learn more. So, uh, oh, share the link. Okay, sharing the link in the chat here. Uh, and I know we're at time, but I will answer a couple of questions in here. How to secure, how secure is using external API to pull data on chain? What a fantastic question, amazing question. So when you're pulling data, right, price feeds, is obviously you know, gonna be the most secure, the most decentralized because we're pulling from a contract that already has this aggregation done for us. This is why I said, you know, doing this any API feature, it takes a little bit more work because pulling from a single rogue API means that once again, you're in that centralized area, right? You have a single API that's gonna control your entire application. So the reason I say it takes a little bit more work is because you want to, to make this really decentralized, you want to you know, find a network of chain link nodes and sync with them so that you can get data from multiple places and multiple nodes. Um, if you're looking just to build you know, an MVP, a minimum viable product or, or some type of demo, th this is still absolutely perfect to use, right? Because you'll be able to pull this data on and do some type of proof of concept really easy, but absolutely great question. I love where your head is at. Yes, that is the exact type of question you should be asking. Good question. Uh, any other questions here? Great. Okay, should the link. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I do have to jump off now, but uh, thank you everybody so much for attending. Uh, and I hope you all learned something. Uh, really excited to see what everyone builds this hackathon. Um, like I said, I, I absolutely love ETH Global. We, we love the hackathons that they put on. Um, you're literally you know, at a phenomenal time. Uh, to be coding. We are like, we are the pioneers of this space. We are building this future uh, and you get to be a part of it. And I'm, I'm so excited that, uh, that I get to be, you know, helping you along the way and, uh, and seeing you all grow and, and build amazing things. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. This was an incredible presentation and you said it better than we ever could. Uh, that's, you know, that's everything that we do here is for the reasons of growth across the entire ecosystem. So thank you to everyone today for participating and being part of that in a small way, and, uh, being a little piece of history that this is. Um, as he said, you can continue the conversation in Discord. We look forward to seeing what you guys build with that and make sure to check out the prizes page to see what Chainlink is offering. Uh, the specific prizes and um, obviously follow up with us if you have any questions. Uh, we'll be ending the stream right here. Uh, but thank you again, Patrick. Thank you again to everyone for joining us. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in the next session. Oh, I should have I should have mentioned our prizes too. Apologies. Yeah, we're, we're doing $10,000 in link um, to the top uh, few projects. I think the prize page has the actual number. But um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing what everybody builds and, uh, and getting a chance to win some fun prizes. Uh, although to me, the real the real prize is the, the amazing learning experience, but you can also win some link. Frenzy made along the way. I got you. <laughs> <laughs>